Hello viewers, hello Facebook viewer, viewers. Welcome to this webinar, which is organized by the Guyana National Bureau of Standards as we commemorate Tourism Awareness Month 2020. My name is Lloyd David. I am the Public Relations Officer of the GNBS. Aside from moderating today's program, I will be sharing perspectives and insights on the GNBS and the services it provides, particularly as it relates to tourism awareness. To ensure that we provide the, the most meaningful discussions uh, for the next 30 minutes or so, we have invited two individuals from key tourism organizations in Ghana um, who work tirelessly to realize Ghana's tourism product. Pleasure is mine to introduce to you Mr. Kamrul Bash uh, of the Ghana Tourism Authority. He is the product development manager of there at the GTA. And also we have with us the president of TAG, Mr. Mitra Ramkumar. Welcome, gentlemen, to this program. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lloyd, for having us. Yes, yeah, certainly. We are, it's a pleasure to have you here on this live. Uh, we, we want to ensure our viewers get as much information as they need. Uh, we want to share, keeping it very simple, of course, so that they can fully benefit from what we talk about today. Uh, I am going to start the ball rolling as we remind viewers about that it's Tourism Awareness Month 2020, and it is celebrated under the team Destination Guyana, Recover, Rebuild, Get Ready to Bounce Back. Indeed, it's a time where our tourism organizations need to bounce back from what we all know, the, the effects of the pandemic. Uh, and so it's necessary for us to you know, share information with the public and show how we as organizations, that is the GNBS, the Ghana Tourism Authority and TAG can help our organization to, or the various organizations, who, whether hotel or restaurants and all these establishments, how they can bounce back. Of course, here at the GNBS, we believe it's, the, it's an opportune time to have this webinar to remind stakeholders in the tourism sector and all of Guyana of the importance of standards, which are crucial to the sector. And as we continue to find solutions, which will help the sector to bounce back and from the severe impact of what we all know, as I mentioned earlier, COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic. The GMBS has a number of standards which can help establishments within the sector to assist in its, their recovery and for them to bounce back and become more sustainable, that is. You will hear more about these as we move along the program. Uh, viewers, you are sure to welcome, we are welcome to share your comments with us as we have our discussions going along, as our various presenters make their points about how we can actually help the tourism sector bounce back. All right, so I will now give my counterparts here on the program an opportunity to speak as I have completed the introduction of this program. And I would like them, starting with Kamrul from the GTA, uh, how to tell us, tell our viewers about the role of his organization and probably to say a little about himself. And then we'll, of course, move across to uh, the president of town. So Kamrul, take it away. All right, well, well thank you, Lloyd. Um, again, um, really appreciate you pulling together this webinar. I do believe it's um, timely and, um, you know, bridging the gap with um, tourism and standards, they obviously go hand in hand. Um, you know, happy Tourism Awareness Month to, to all your viewers and, and listeners. Um, you know, we're celebrating a different um, mode and different capacities uh, this year, obvious, for obvious reasons. Um, I'm happy to be on this uh, program to, to share some of the, the things that the GTA has put in place um, to, you know, scale up and, and to improve upon standards within the, you know, within the tourism industry. Um, <clears throat> in, in a nutshell, really, what, what the Ghana Tourism Authority um, does is it's really to develop and to promote sustainable tourism in destination Ghana, right? And um, we do that through a very multifaceted um, approach where you know apart from the the marketing and promotion of the of the destination as a whole we also engage in you know co-facilitating the 
the development of the of the tourism products you know so what what do people really come here to experience and enjoy uh, we play a hand in, in ensuring that we expand out upon the tourism products as you'd mentioned and and really try to craft and develop new itineraries also uh, and i guess in direct alignment with with standards um, the Ghana Tourism Authority has a, a role, a regulatory role that is, um, that it plays within the the industry. So, you know, it, it inspects and, and certifies um, tourism businesses, various tourism businesses, and I'll, I'll, I guess I'll delve into to those categories uh, as the as the program, you know, goes along. But definitely yeah. we have a role to play um, within, within, the, um, within the sector to help raise standards and improve standards overall. Yes, yes, Metro. Um, what's what's your role at Tag there? Thank you very much for having me live. And as Kamu said, thank you for arranging this this webinar in a very timely in terms of this month, especially in a pandemic where the industry uh, has been severely affected. Uh, to say the least, it has had a catastrophic effect, uh, but we are resilient <coughs> people, and so we will recover, and we will rebound. And I believe we are on that path already. Uh, the Guyana's tourism has tremendous strengths and opportunities in a tourism environment. But let me, I can say a lot about that, but um, if you, you want me to speak a little bit more with me, I'm the, I'm the current president of the Tourism and Hospitality Association of Guyana, which is the tourism private sector. Uh, we are the National uh, Tourism and Hotel Association of Guyana. Uh, we were established in 1992, so we are now in existence for uh, 28 years. And uh, we're going from strength to strength. We have um, coming up just um, tomorrow, starting January kind of strong week. And so uh, there are a number of, of things that we have planned for the set for the All right, then. Thank you very much, Metra and Kamrul, for that uh, introduction, of course, telling us, telling our viewers about the role of your various organizations uh, as we get your work done. Uh, certainly, uh, the GMBS has its role, as I've mentioned earlier, in the tourism sector. But before I, I talk a bit about that, I just want to uh, thank the, the viewers that are currently with us on, on, on this program. Uh, if you have just joined us, we are focusing on standards and tourism. We want to discuss how standards impact tourism and, of course, talk a bit about our, our local tourism products so that we can, of course, get you on board to begin to utilize your, your local tourism destinations so you can have that fun and opportunity. Uh, in, uh, regarding the GNBS, uh, we are responsible primarily for, for the development of national standards. And of course, we implement some international standards that are relevant to our stakeholders locally. Uh, as we are talking about tourism, I just would like to talk about the, you know, just mentioned the bread and breakfast standard. There is a national standard for bread and breakfast. Uh, this standard is a, is a very important standard for those small homeowners or homeowners who are thinking, you know what, I have, I have some space and the space is good enough to entertain, uh, invite tourists coming to our country or someone who needs a place to stay. And, and be able to, you know, relax, get a, get a bedroom, another facility to themselves. So that standard uh, outlines requirements of bread and breakfast, bed and breakfast facilities. And surely uh, it was developed in 2016 and it will help, uh, you know, a lot of time. Currently the airport is re has reopened and persons are actually looking for a place to stay coming on to the Christmas season particularly. Really large amounts of persons want some way to stay at a very affordable cost, and the bed and breakfast facilities allow for such, you know, uh, comfort and relaxation. And we encourage. We want to, I want to encourage uh, you know the local, encourage Guyanese who have the residents to think about approaching the Ghana Tourism Authority. Uh, they they are the implementer of the facilitator of the standard. 
and offer and through the guidance of the standard begin to implement the requirements right so that is the first standard i would like to talk about or uh, i have talked spoken about and and it's a very good benefit to many stakeholders locally um Cameroon, in terms of i know the the Ghana Tourism authority they provide that vital role as you mentioned um especially as relating to monitoring uh, monitoring support and training for the industry can you tell our stakeholders a bit about that uh, for sure lloyd um good question and there are very broad roles you know training and capacity building and um you know monitoring or, or what we'd like to say um uh, you know a regulation rule really um so I guess they go hand in hand and very you know, complementary by nature. You know, you want to provide the, the the technical assistance to to tourism stakeholders so that they're you know they're aware of what the standards are. Because um, you know, if you're going to ask people to become compliant, you'll obviously need to do you know training of training, right? So you know, currently on our regulatory framework, we have four broad. Uh, categories which um, you know we, we license businesses and and they are the tourism accommodation establishments which are the hotels apartments and inns um, we also have for the interior lodges and resorts that you would know along the Rupinoni and Esquibo circuits we have for tour operators who you know design and, and operate tours and we have for individuals those tour guides who actually lead um, you know trips um, across country now, what, what we've done is that we've tried to expand out on the list because obviously it needs to encapsulate the tourism industry, which is very broad, right? Very cross cutting and covers a lot more than those four. So we've embarked <clears throat> on a process to expand out on the regulations so that we could have standards for experiential providers. You know, a lot of people are asking that, they, you know, they want to be more immersed in in activities within the destination, which are smaller operators. We're looking to have, you know, standards for destination management companies. You know, we have um, a single company here in Guyana, which offers um, lots of logistics and, um, you know, services for the, for the industry. We also look into have outfitters as part of the expanded um, regulations, right? So all of these, all of these areas now will be added to you know the the mandate of the Ghana Tourism Authority, so we could have a broad reach really, um, and to ensure that the majority of um, stakeholders, um, operators, tourism operators are you know are compliant with the laws. Now, in terms of training capacity building, we have quite a few um, you know to have people in a state of readiness want to become compliant, but also provision of of services to the industry so for example um, you know service quality is something that you know a lot of travelers when they when they come to a destination they look forward to you know, um, you know great hospitality you know Guyanese by by nature are, are hospitable uh, but they need that refinement of course you know um, as you're doing it on a routine basis so we, we do have um, trainings that are geared towards improving you know quality service we also look at it from a health and safety standpoint um and, and you know the the covid 19 pandemic has really exacerbated the situation for the need for, for health and safety um guidelines whether it's in food and beverage or general sanitation practices all right so th those are a couple of, of trainings that we that you know we've had in-house and we've continued to you know to partner with a lot of um, entities, both regionally and internationally, um, you know, to bring in standardized curriculum. Because when we're talking about training programs, we obviously want to have them delivered in a comprehensive peer-to-peer -peer manner. So we've been successful at getting curricula from the Caribbean Tourism Organization, as well as the Adventure Travel Trade um, Association, and as well as the <clears throat> from experiential providers, right? So those are very apt and appropriate for our industry. And what we've continued to do is to, you know, strike out on train the trainer programs. So have you know regions within the within tourism corridors to to be master trained, right? So we want to expand out and and to create a, a larger net value across the industry. Yes, that's that's quite a bit, uh, Mr. Cameron. So certainly, uh, uh, we know that 
the, the, the Ghana Tourism Authority is doing a lot to help the sector, and that is very commendable. But before I invite uh, Mitra to talk about you know, the impact of COVID and, and his plans and initiative there at Tal, I just want to mention to uh, touch on two things that you've mentioned, which has to do with the management of the sector. Uh, I know the GNBS uh, as the ISO 45001 standard, but focus on occupation safety and health. It is very important standard to, con to be considered. I know many of our tourists, they are actually, they come uh, in relation to our oil and gas sector, right? So, so we, they, they, when they visit the oil and gas sector requires some amount of, you know, uh, uh, in terms of safety and, and it, in terms of tourism, when, when these diplomats and, and these high level visitors, visitors, they expect a certain level of uh, service, right? So, so the ISO 45001 is, would be helpful. It speaks about occupation safety and health. So persons in the various hotel and industry, hotel industry and so forth can actually utilize some of the requirements to improve what they're doing. Also the ISO, ISO 22000, which is actually the food safety management system standard, right? That addresses food from the from the farm to the fork. Uh, that's that's the uh, what you call the mantra of the standard, essentially, from the far, farm to the fork. And what that essentially means that uh, hotels and other establishments that are preparing special meals for our tourists need to ensure that the food that they are acquiring uh, to present to our to our guests for consumption must be wholesome. They must be safe. And the ISO 22000 standard offers uh, relevant guidelines in terms of how they can actually take care of, for example, the lettuce, how they can handle it to avoid contamination on the farm, how they transport it, how they take it and store it in the various locations, and then the preparation. The, that's just an example as to how uh, useful the ISO 22000 standard is. So uh, I'm gonna touch on more standards, particularly the ISO 9001, which deal with customer. Uh, <laughs> but I'll make sure the opportunity. Uh, Let's give Mitchell the opportunity to tell us about uh, the whole impact of the pandemic and how uh, the plans and initiative of the TAG going forward to deal with this whole environment. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Lon. Just, just before, just before I get to that, which yep. is which might be seen in a, in a negative light because of the effect that the pandemic has had on our industry. Yes. Uh, as I mentioned, we, we, we are resilient people, and we are going to we are going to rebound, we are going to recover, rebound from this. But just before I get to that, I want to touch on the business component of mm -hmm. having stand. And so, yes. it is imperative for people to understand that when you talk standards, it's not it's not increased cost. It is something. Customers to your establishment because you have standards, and so there the, the business component needs to be taken into consideration. You would have touched on the oil and gas sector, so the business traveler for, mm. for in, in, in the in the tourism private sector is a huge mm. market, and it's going to be is going to be um, more important now. Um, than ever before in Guyana's history because of the oil and gas sector. You would have a huge amount of experts in country who are looking for something to do on a weekend, but they will not go out into places that doesn't have standards. And so the, the standards uh, view, it's, it's really where um, gives you that, that level of authenticity that you need and for people to feel comfortable uh, when they visit your establishment. Well, and when you twin that with, the, with what the GTA is doing, uh, then it really it really gives mm -hmm. our, our destination um, um, some amount of standards. So what, I, what I'm saying, when we talk about standards, we're saying that we have, these, are, these are the standards that we have. We just talk about the, about the bread and breakfast, for example. And we know in Guyana, we, we have a culture of you know just doing a little setup and, Start of the 
we need to change that. In, 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 a, in an oil and gas world, if you want to use that term, standards is everything. So in everything you do, you have to have standards. It's been, it being more important now in a COVID environment. So even in our homes, we need to ensure that we have standards. So this is, this is why standards are so important and imperative. The tourism sector is, is actually taking it a step further. So in addition to having the establishment, uh, the facility, whether it be a lodge, a resort, bar, whatever it is, when that facility uh, becomes operable, we want to ensure not only that we have all the protocols in place at that facility, but we take it a step further to ensure that the employee uh, for example, the transportation that they, that they use to come to work and so on, that was like exposed in, in, in a big way. So, so it's being, it's being, it's taking on a bigger picture. And it's, it's, it's because that we want the, the, the patrons to feel comfortable that we are taking every step possible to ensure our own safety and safety for, 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 for those folks. So, I just wanted to touch on that. On, on that company, the business company, and this is where I believe a lot of us make a mistake because they, they, they just focus on the increased cost that, it, that, it, that it's there now to implement stand. One needs to take a long-term view, and the long-term view is that you, your, your bottom line will, will be in a better uh, position if you have standards because you attract more people you have repeat guests because when you come to your facility the, the, the quality of that experience will be something that we want to come to. indeed quality experience are our thoughts So that you, you that tag itself is looking to undertake to actually you know uh, boost the sector given our current scenario. Right. Um, so so let me, let me let me also I want to touch a little bit on uh, on Gainer Restaurant Week. Uh, previously, mm -hmm. you mentioned that uh, about about the, the you call it the farm the fork. Hello. Yeah, we usually call it the farm to table, farm to table <laughs> concept, right? So, yeah. so it, it, what people want to know, they, they, they want to be able to trace that food, whatever you're using, your ingredients that you're using to prepare that meal. They want to feel comfortable that there is traceability for the, okay. those, those ingredients. So they want to know, for example, the type of fertilizers that are being used, the type of chemicals that are being used in the in, in, in the production process. So if you have the standard and you are able to demonstrate that there is traceability from the farm to it, then that gives you that you could imagine that's a huge market tool for your business. So so I, I just wanna I just wanna put, put that out there. And um, you'll also ask the question about um, the impact on the industry. Um, I wouldn't want to give you figures uh, from our the, from our end uh, because I, I don't want to be accused of, of, of just uh, just pulling figures out of the air. But that is, um, that is okay. That a, is okay. A study, a study that was done from the GTA and it was actually taken from as part of that study was taken from the GNDs in terms of visitor expenditure. And if you look at your visitor arrival numbers, you are looking at almost forty billion dollars in losses for, for wow. the tourism sector. So this is this is this is huge. Um, and while that figure might seem um, significant, it is a lot more because you're not talking here about the, the sector that feed into tourism, like for example the arts and crafts, the transportation providers, all of these people and the farmers. The coconut vendors, all of these people feed into the tourism industry. If you were to take everyone in that value chain, then you will end up with sometimes almost doubling that figure. So one needs to understand the value of the tourism sector in Ghana, and especially when you look at the impact. And so this is one of uh, the many reasons why I'm saying that the tourism sector has historically been underestimated for the producers. 
we need to be recognized just like every other export sector and we need to be incentivized just like every other export sector and so uh, if this is done they would have said so. frontier industry so while guyana as a, as a country as a, as a new frontier i see tourism to be because the food industry meshes with it. And if you were to and if you were to to look at it, you know, done across the world, look at the embassy, look at the in the desert for the tourism industry, then you will understand that this this industry, the two the two industries meshes better and they complement each other. And standards is a is a key component of that. So it, it all goes with it. And, and and so if, if you look at that as a lobby, as a lobby organization, we we believe in the need for positive change in terms of increasing quality, increasing standards, and increasing the quality of people as well. This is one of the reasons why we lobby for the establishment of the hospitality institutes. And to the GTO, we should be having a standardized curriculum because we need so so much in having standards and the value and benefit to your bottom line of standards. Yes, Metro, that, that's quite uh, some good information uh, in terms of uh, how standards can actually benefit the sector. Kamrul, you have any um, anything you want to add in this regard based on what uh, Metro said? Uh, I know it spoke a lot about you know how standards can actually impact the sector. Uh, oh, what is the view of the GTA on this? Yeah, well, largely in alignment with uh, Mitra's comments. Um, to build off on his, I think his very last point in terms of bringing in a standardized curriculum, um, you know, through the partnership with, with TAG and GTA, we've struck up a, a donor support from the Caribbean Development Bank really to, to enhance small businesses. Because, you know, we, we speak about large businesses and so forth, but really, how do we look to develop standards across the board then? right because we need to take a, a holistic approach to this and you know that that contract has been signed it's been inked um and it really goes hand in hand with the hospitality institute because we really want that formal body really that provides skill training um that is much needed in the sector you know so persons you know who want to do you know waiting or persons who are you know involved in customer service you know reception food and beverage housekeeping the full works right the full nine yards as we'd say um you know the curriculum um is is in the process of development They're, they've started to do uh, interviews with stakeholders and this will be a real game changer for the industry right so i mean the, the training again and curriculum will be of a very high standard and you know what we'd be looking for is to have it accredited again with the um, national accreditation council here locally Right. So again, you see an alignment with with a programmatic activity and it being standardized. And, and that is the approach we've we've really um, you know taken at, at, at the GTA at, at all levels, right? So you have again from the revised regulations, as I mentioned, to help to you know raise the bar, so as to speak, in, in the industry. Because because that is a challenge and, and I'm mature quite um, sufficiently alluded to the oil and gas sector. Um, and this is something that, that I can speak to about, you know, new product development. Um, you know, there's, there's a bit of, a, or let me say not a bit of a gap, but a gap really between what are the expectations from business travelers, oil and, the oil and gas sector, and the offerings in the industry. And, and Lloyd, you would know about the National Quality Infrastructure Program by the GNDS um, sure. as part of that program here. Um, you know, how do we have more businesses into the system, raising the standards overall? So, you know, in, in a in a hospitality business, you, you know, there, there are many different areas, really. You have waste management, you have, you know, health and safety, um, you know, so much, you know, areas that, that can be improved. And, um, you know, with the GTA support, and I think, you know, the GTA and GNBS can collaborate even more. Um, I don't think we have an MOU, um, but I think it's something that we should we should talk about. You know, so how do how can we collaborate 
you know, as assist agencies to, you know, I guess sensitize the the industry more and, and to bring that compliance level, you know, up a notch. Yes, Carmel, as you speak, I, I, I more and more realize the need for that MOU that is that you speak about between the GTA and the GNBS. Uh, of course, uh, there is need for that and the sector needs to move forward and we need to collectively work on, on moving the sector forward. One of the things you mentioned, you spoke about, you know, the plans in terms of training and, and for, the, for the sector. We want to ensure that in everything that you do, you, of course, utilize the requirements of the various standards because I know of other industries where they, where they t tend to forget about standards and they are talking about, you know, the specifications and they're speaking specific to things without addressing what are the requirements of some of the national and international standards. So make sure when, when that is done, when you roll out your program for the industry, uh, the full gamut of standards is incorporated in every mm -hmm. aspect. I would right. think that, um, as you know, uh, the International Organization for Standardization, the ISO, has some mirror committees, of which one is tourism. Um, I, I guess a little historical context would be good. So uh, about three years ago, the, I guess the GNBS shortlisted a few sectors for this mirror committee where the, the committee basically would have the ability to, to influence you know, or to vote on various standards in the industry, right? So tourism being one of them, um, we participate, you know, persons within the industry participate in the development of standards. And given that Ghana's trajectory is, I guess we could say it's at a developmental phase, you know, it's, it's very critical to get the level of insights from, you know, more developed or mature destinations as to how they go about improving standards so we basically have a seat at the table to see exactly how standards are being developed and and to vote whether we are you know whether we we agree or we commit to these to these um you know criteria that they that they outline and we've attended quite a few workshops so far and and that will help i guess you know standards are, are voluntary by nature but that, that's where i'm saying where the gnbs tag and gta can obviously all pitch into so to show the importance of, of why you know businesses should be adopting you know more and more standards. Indeed, Cameron. Uh, for the viewers, if you have just joined us, we are actually having a live. The GMBS has organized this live, and we are talking about standards in tourism. And be sure to make your comments, give your contribution to the program, which we will discuss. We will talk about as as we move along the program. So thank you very much for spending your time with us in the live uh, viewers. Be sure to make those comments, give us those feedback so that we can know how you feel about all that we are seeing here at, at, the, at, the, G, at the GMBS on this live. Uh, we have in our midst, Kamrul Bash from the Ghana Tourism Authority. He is the product development manager. And of course, Mitchell Ram Kumar from the, the Tourism Hospitality Association of Guyana. And we are having a great time as we, we focus on in the live. Uh, I just want to mention uh, something as it, I, I, have, I have the opportunity of, you know, preparing documents, particularly articles for the newspaper. Uh, and I use the various standards to get the details, understand the document in order for, to prepare, to prepare uh, these articles. And interestingly, when I look at the requirements of some of the standards, particularly the restaurant standard, Code of practice for restaurant and accommodation and so the the requirements are very simple to implement you don't have to take all in all together and and try to do all at once there are some simple things you can focus on health and safety you can you can focus on cleanliness you can focus on how your how your uh how your how your staff interact with the tourists uh there are little things and the standard these standards outline all of that right so uh this is a, this is another standard here uh the accommodation standard it's simple it talks about your, your layout of your building your electrical installation the amount of the amount of lights in a particular room and all of that these standards are simple uh, and most i believe most of our local destinations have most of the requirements of the standard just need to make sure that they, they, they fine tune the little the little areas that they need to improve and surely they can actually you know uh, implement all of the requirements 
And of course, GTA, GTA will look towards, you know, certifying them based on these requirements. Yes, Lloyd. And, and you know, for viewers who might be thinking or, or for operators in the industry who may, you know, who may perceive that adoption of standards might be a very technical and arduous process, you know, a lot of the standards that are, you know, that are given or voted on by ISO and, and even the Ghana Tourism Authority standards, they're minimum requirements, really. All right. So they basically outline what, what you need to do at minimum to ensure that you have, you know, um, best practices and, and processes mm -hmm. in place. So, you know, I don't want anybody to, you know, have the fear really or the apprehension that, you know, it's, it's going to take long as a technical process and it's costly, right? I think Mitra mentioned about it being a cost center, you know, but equally important, I think it's, a, it's an investment that you make, uh, you know, for the, for the long term. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, Mitra, let me bring you in back here uh, to get, share some experiences, some general experiences from, uh, you know, TAG, you know, what you want to see uh, and uh, to improve the sector. What, what, what are, I know you mentioned some already, but the general expectation of TAG going forward, particularly as it relates to oil and gas, and as we bounce back, as the team say, bounce back from from what we are experiencing. So what, what, what is the feeling of TAG in terms of going, going forward? I, I, I would say, I, I can't say that we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are in hibernation. I actually believe that we are very much in an in a anticipation mode. We, uh, we want to get back to work. We are anxious. And if you, if you were to take um, Guyana Restaurant Week, for example, when we, when, we, um, when we throw the idea out that let's do, we have already missed one season of Guyana Restaurant Week, which is in June because of this pandemic. Uh, we believe it can be done safely. Let's do it in November. Even if we have uh, 10 restaurants or, or less than 10. Um, so when we threw that out, it, we, we, were, we were surprised uh, of the of the comments that came back and that, that people really wanted to get back to work they wanted to they wanted to go back to doing things that they love and so um, I believe that enthusiasm and that um, and that uh, drive to, 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 to get back um, to work and do the things they, they, they love is what is what drives this sector and, and Guyanese as, as, as mentioned before are hospitable people and so um we uh will we will not give up just like just like i i, would, I like using this example of of 9 11 uh, and what 9 11 did to the aviation sector um the, the, the people recovered from that and so we will recover from from COVID and, and, and this pandemic so but what what one needs to look at is what will be the new norm so if you were to look at 9-11, for example, what 9-11 did, if you're going to do the board a plane, you have to take off your belt, take off your shoe, empty your pockets, mm -hmm. standard, regardless, which you like. So it's the same thing. So, so when, you, when you're going to go out, what we say, to, to, and this should be standard across, you, you wear a mask, you show, show social distance, and, and you sanitize, uh, ensure you have your temperature checked and so on. So what one needs to focus on is what is the new norm? How can we live alongside this virus? And how can we operate our businesses uh, in a safe way? Safety being the watchword. Because if we, if we I don't believe um, lockdown or shutdown is an option, I believe you have to give people a chance to breathe. You have to give businesses a chance to breathe. And when I, when I talk about businesses here, I'm not talking about the owners and the, and the managers. I'm talking about the people who depend on this industry for their survival and the survival of their families. And these are the persons who are often vulnerable. Like, for example, these single mothers, school dropouts. More, a lot of these people are employed in the tourism sector. Tourism is, is a labor intensive industry. And so when you were to look at the value chain of the tourism sector, I touched on it uh, a little bit before, but if one needs to look, if, if you look at that, and this is why it complements the oil and gas sector, because there that sector is, is capital intensive, it's 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 highly skilled, but in tourism, anyone can get into this industry and, and, and work the and work their way up. And, and get into field any of the of, of the amazing uh, job opportunities that are there. 
um, regardless of if you're a housekeeper, you're a chef, you're a bartender, uh, you know, in accounting, I myself, I, I, I'm the CFO of a rhyming group. So what I'm saying is tourism, is, it needs to be looked at in that broad picture. Um, and in, in terms of the, the employment opportunities, I believe in this, in, in, in this country, we should, our employment rate really should be almost zero because of the, of the population size that we have. So we, we need to look at tourism in, in that light. And, and if you and if you were to, to look at standards and ensuring because we have a culture of oh we can just get away with it or we just do it this way I believe while these standards are are voluntary we need to ensure that that Guyana as a destination has um, compliance and we also tag as a lobby group um we are, are lobbying for standards to be applied across the industry because when someone comes to Guyana, they want to to go out they want to go and and, and experience our culture uh, and food is a big part of our culture because we are a land of six people so you can have different different so 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 the, the food is really is is a big, huge attraction culinary tourism is huge and this is what Guyana restaurant we promotes However, if we don't have standards in that, what you can have is persons going and have um, something that they, that they, that they um, would enjoy, and for some reason they get food poisoning, and that's the last thing that can damage the entire experience that you, you would have come to have in Guyana. You want to have be able to try the big pork rice, you know, pool, you know, um, the the. Um, all of the other the other dishes, Chinese food, you know, the, the gentleman on the on the, um, on the, 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 the US television show saying Guyana has brilliant Chinese food. So all of this uh, Guyana, I can talk to you all, all the time about this. But the point here is is that if one you you are as strong as your as your weakest link. So what we need to do is ensure that those weak links are strengthened, and this is what standards do. Yes, indeed. Petra, you've actually, you know, stretched my imagination. There's some rising the whole sector, talking about the good opportunities that are actually still available uh, in spite of uh, uh, our little challenge or big challenge that is. Uh, so uh, I'm very, ex I'm feeling very excited. Like I want to have some sort of good experience uh, going to some destination or being a part of something that relates to it, and particularly the food and the eating and the culinary experience that you speak about. Uh, you actually sum up it well, but uh, I just need to also say that, you know, uh, we need to, there's opportunity for medical tourism. I know the GMBS has its role in uh, medical laboratory, certifying medical laboratories to the, to the national standard. And these laboratories are definitely working to a, a very high level. And, and if a tourist, for example, is thinking about, you know, I need the medical care at a very affordable cost. Uh, they they might not want to pay the U.S. dollars in the United States, but they can pay those same dollars a very smaller amount here in Guyana. So they might want to, in addition to coming to have the Guyanese experience, do a, a medical checkup, and and that adds to our, you know medical uh, medical tourism. Uh, all of that is in the experience. I know you spoke about food, but medication and and other things are are, are there for a tourist to take advantage of as we yeah. Yeah, sorry i just want to put this point in here so while medical experience uh, tourism is huge and you would be surprised of, of of the value that that can bring to a country right so you, you cover that but i what i want to put on it Um, this is this is what I'm I'm talking about. I believe Guyana as a destination um, can and should be promoted as a health and wellness destination. Meaning that I will share my personal experiences with you. Whenever I go into the rainforest, I feel as though I'm getting a long cleanser. So I don't need a doctor to tell me that this this is good for me, right? But as a matter of fact, it is scientifically proven. Because if you look at the geography of Guyana, most of Guyana is covered by the Guyana Shields or forms part of the Guyana Shields, which is known as the lungs of the earth. So you are literally taking a walk into the lungs of the earth. And um, Guyana, um, as, a, as, a, as a destination, 
our the tourism private sector, if you were to look at the tools that go into the, these, these places, these communities and so on, before COVID, we were operating tours with individuals that coming from boarding or fishing adventure, very small groups, families. So we don't have a lot, you know, a lot of mixing of people um, for this tourism industry really to operate. So if you ask me my personal opinion, I believe we need to cross some T's and dot some I's, but we need to get back to work. We need to we need to operate because we, we don't we don't have uh, what a lot of the other destinations have as a challenge. That is an opportunity for us, and we need to take advantage of it. Yes, yes, indeed. Tamara, uh, I know Rich and I have been speaking a lot. If you, if you have any addition in this aspect, be sure to jump in and share your view on what is being said. Well, two things there, um, Lloyd, that, uh, that, that I'd pick up um, and that resonated with me was, I guess, in terms of the product, I know you mentioned um, medical tourism. Um, I feel that one of the things that would be on the rise is health and wellness. And, uh, you know, as, as you guys both alluded to, you know, the, the nature and the makeup of the tourism product allows us to have that, um, you know, comparative advantage to other destinations. You know, we're... We're a niche destination. We're not overrun by by, by travelers. Um, you basically have you know a lodge to yourself. You know when, when you're in there, but um, you know we based on the, the product composition that we have really you know the from the the black or Coca Cola coffee looking water that that people think are very you know or therapeutic you know to the you know to the beautiful waterfalls that we have to the nature experiences and you know the hike you know hikes and nutrition and, and all of that, you know, a lot of people, because they've been locked up, you know, they've been pent up and, and they really want to get back in tune with, with nature and, and to really be rebalanced, um, you know, um, I, I think Destination Guyana, you know, will provide um, that sort of product that a lot of people um, will be looking for. But importantly, you know, developing the product or expanding out the product is, is important. But equally, as you mentioned, we need to do it in a, a healthier and, and safer way. And I agree with Mitchell that we need to operationalize back the sector. We need to have the sector reopen, you know, but obviously in the right way. And I think all of you would agree with me. And one of the things that we've that we've you know engaged the, the task force, the national task force that is of late, is that we want to see what are the standard operating procedures so again standards you know what are what are the protocols that your business would have you know to cater for travelers you know when the time is right or you know or when they're fit to reopen you know so are, how are you actually welcoming guests you know what is the protocols for housekeeping and uh, you know at, at your reception area or when you're going on a tour you know what means or what measures are you going to put in place to ensure that the you know that the safety of the visitors is of paramount importance so you know we've started to you know develop these templates right and, and it'll be launched pretty soon you'll see it within the next couple of days where we're going to send these templates out to, to businesses you know who, who need the guidance because a lot of businesses do need the sort of support the assistance from the authority to help draft these protocols right a lot a lot of them already have the protocols in place and are on the brink of reopening really as Mitchell mentioned in anticipation of reopening right but we want to ensure that you know the, a, a large lot of of um, of, of uh, stakeholders are in a state of readiness. Because you know we're coming down to the the Christmas season, and you know we're anticipating that a lot of domestic travelers will you know will want to go you know somewhere visit family, you know visit a destination, and you know we need to ensure that these places are are fit and and, and ready to do so. So. You know, apart from developing the templates, we need to do an on-site assessment to see the protocols being enacted, you know, in, in practical sense. And also to, to, you know, to give them that certification or, or sign off that they're, that they're compliant and ready. So that is the, I guess, the step-by-step -step approach that, that we want to take, you know, to make it as, as easy as, as, you know, can be. Because a lot of people, it's, it's taken a mental toll. It's, it's been economically and, and socially devastating really for the sector and, and people are just looking for a little support really um to reopen yes Kamala, i noticed the time is slipping away from us so uh remember uh we are, we are you what you've said is very good and and we, we fo the focus here is indeed about standards 
So I'll, I'll give you guys an opportunity to, to give your closing remarks, but I just want to reiterate that the Ghana National Bureau of Standards has a wide range of standards that support the tourism sector. These standards include the bread and breakfast standard. We have the code of practice uh, for assessment, licensing, and registration of uh, tourism facilities and grading of accommodation facilities. We have the code of practice for tour, op tour operators and tour guides. Uh, we also have the management of rest, the quality management of restaurant services, right? That that standard is very important, especially as we prepare to uh, to celebrate uh, uh, restaurant week. Uh, and also, we have the nine ISO nine thousand one standard, which many of our operations are uh, organized businesses are implementing. Uh, especially because it focuses on customer satisfaction and continual improvement. Uh, I belabor the point of the need to implement uh, the ISO 22 standard, which focuses on food and food safety. And there are so many other standards that, that are very relevant to the sector and will, of course, allow it to improve, allow it to bounce back from the pandemic and all of that. So I'll, I'll just give Campbell a, a chance to give a final words, and then I'll give Metro the opportunity. And then probably Metro can introduce the, the, the video that we queued up to show or remind our local uh, our Guyanese or those who are watching from ab abroad uh, how nice and how lovely our country is. So uh, Campbell, closing remarks, and then Metro. Sure. Well, sure, Lloyd. Um, so I know that we have some questions at the um you know, that, that persons have queued up. Um, are we going to take that at the end or you want, want us to, um, you know, do the closing remarks now? Yeah, um, uh, I'll have uh, Omesh pop the questions on screen and we can actually address them uh, going along. So questions. All right, so this this is from Ms., uh, Mr. Gopal. He says standards are voluntary, but how can the GTN tag there for thorough GMBS? work on getting the, the stakeholders. Could you put the back the, uh, through? All right, our standards are voluntary, but how can the GTA through GNBS work on getting stakeholders up to scratch, especially in the emerging oil and gas uh, sector? Uh, any comments there? Uh, simply uh, keep uh, answer them as simply as possible. Um, right. Yeah, well, I could take it for a stab at it. Well, yes, indeed, standards are voluntary, right? But but are necessary. And to the point I alluded to earlier, you know, that um, we need to work together. We need to have that, you know, coordinated approach amongst, you know, the bodies here present, you know, GTA, TAG, GNBS, so that persons, you know, would see the importance and need to put in these standards. But, you know, from a regulatory standpoint too, a lot of these criteria, you know, um, on standards, as I mentioned, we've been working with the ISO mirror committees, which have touched on quite a number of standards, you understand, and um, we've incorporated those standards right into our new framework, right, which is likely to be approved um, early next year. So you'll find that 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 a lot of the criteria that are you know, that are <clears throat> being proposed by international standard bodies you know well obviously a lot of them are, are of minimum requirements will be working to support businesses to implement them right okay. so you know so <clears throat> so one of the things is that we're obviously going to give that level of support which is needed because uh, again a lot of people will perceive standards to be a difficult process and, and enacting and implementing them can be a challenge so yes i guess support is is, is key in this process Yes. Uh, any other question, Amish? You could, uh, yes. Can can All right. Regards to the hotel's rating can example, four star or five star. Uh, addressing this anytime soon. Are we addressing the rating of the hotels anytime soon? Uh, you guys would be the best to speak on that. Uh, uh, Tab and GTA. Any comments? Are we looking to? Uh, you know, overseas there are four-star hotels, five-star hotels. Have we been looking at that in Guyana to rate our hotels, given the fact that we 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 might have, we will have a lot more visitors who might be looking for a certain level of service from our various hotels? Right. Well, I think again the the process in in terms of licensing is is one because the the compliance rate has been, I would say, relatively low in the industry. 
you sort of want to have a lot more people into the system first, right? So a lot of people recognizing the need for standardization, right? So that's the first hurdle that we that we must, you know, overcome. Once we overcome that, the system will be designed in such a way that it would allow for rating. So it's what we call a phase, a phase structure or a tier based structure where persons are going to come into the first tier, right? Satisfy yeah. some minimum requirements, right? And then move on to the second tier and third tier. And when you complete the entire licensing process, you obviously will then be, you know, rated based on international hotel rating. So again, alignment with international standards was of, of paramount importance when putting together the new frameworks that, that we have. Indeed. Okay. Am I sure any more questions? Uh, we seem to, you know, uh, uh, time. Uh, all right. During the pandemic, many businesses in the industry should get their the, the thermometers verified by the GMVS. I know this is something that the GMVS has been doing. We we somewhat uh, many whether it not uh, not only in the tourism sector but also in in our commercial businesses. Many of them are submitting their their thermometers, their infrared thermometers that they use to check the temperature of persons entering and exiting their establishment. Um, we have been very calibrating those instruments to make sure that they read properly because you know that's a good indication of uh, whether someone has contracted the disease or not so we have been paying our part here at the gmbs to ensure that uh you know thermometers that are used in the tourism sector and even in other areas are you know accurate they're reading accurately right and, and what we've done we've um, we've done some distributions too we've purchased thermometers for uh, a lot of indigenous centric communities and for tourism businesses we've utilized gta has utilized the gnbs services um to calibrate the the thermometers so if 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 you do see a donation from the ghana tourism authority just know that that was calibrated by the gnbs and obviously it has that certificate and stamp you know on you know yeah. the companies it and we've been actively encouraging persons to have you know bring in their their instrument to be calibrated as you don't want to have any false reading um, you know, because it's very important. All right. So there's another question that has to do with uh, making our local industry, our hotel industry, competitive uh, with with persons with other large establishments eyeing our local tourism sector. Uh, is there any anyone but anyone can respond to this? Well, well, I think I touched on it. I think I touched on it um, in my previous response, where I said that it's going to be a tier-based approach understanding that that not everybody is at the same level right just like an exam no child is or no student really is at the same level we have you know we are very very in position based on resources and and experiences so that's that's because of that understanding we we want to ensure that that everybody benefits so it's not well you achieve all of these um requirements or criteria and then you become you know licensed we understood that you know people are at different stages of development and, and hence why we want that tier based approach so more people into the system again right work with them and to ensure that they climb the, the ladder incrementally all right uh uh dear market is asking about the the trampolines that are used in the seawall the poor quality trampolines uh if the gmbs can do anything about them uh the gmbs we operate purely based on the availability of national standards uh or international standard or available standard requirements we do not have such standard to deal with that particular product at this time, but uh, surely it's something to consider. Persons uh, need to consider the safety of their children as they utilize those those um, items. If, if you believe that there should be a national standard for tra trampolines used locally, uh, surely uh, go on our website, uh, gnbsui.org, and you can uh, pull out a form and, and Fill it out and say, you know what, we need a standard for trampoline. Uh, can we? Yeah. And I thank Mr. Hackett for raising that because this is particularly on the on the seawall tarmac, for example. If you ask my view, my personal view is that they should not have, they should not be there, um, especially in a pandemic. That is something that should really not be allowed um, in a pandemic to to, to operate uh, because you are putting children touching each other, bouncing in, 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 that, in that space, um, and it really should not happen. And this is this is where I, I, I usually have a disparity in terms of 
what is being allowed in the in the in the entertainment or um, tourism sector because it's not being fairly um, it's not being fairly ruled out. And we, us, for example, um, like like for Guyana Restaurant Week, we had appealed to the task force for at least during Restaurant Week uh, to have dining. We, we we had never proposed for indoor dining. We said outdoor dining is going to be, but we, we wanted to have the opportunity to let's say join a team. Let's say a family of five come. Out. It means then that you have to put four portions of one table and then one portion goes to another table. We're saying you can join two tables, for example. You maintain the three feet distancing. And 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 so and so but, but what we, what you do now is enable that family to come out and, and, and dine. At the moment, if your family is over four, then you won't be able to sit at that table. So this is the disparity I'm talking about here. So you know, one one industry or one area, for example, which is just a stone throw away from from where this this is happening, uh, it's being it's happening uh, unregulated. For example, if, if you look at the trampolines, there they they are not even six feet apart. Our tables are going to be six feet apart, right? So so that is the regulation that is there that governs. Uh, restaurant operations from the official gazette and this is where i believe we fall down as a country and as a destination we need to have standards we need to have enforcement and it cannot be happening these, these things cannot be happening right in your backyard the police is right there it's, it's happening in, in in front of everyone's eyes you're saying to the tourism sector that we can't operate um, or, or, uh, six people going going to Irokram or, or going to the Eskimo River for for a day trip or or, or or overnight, for example. But on, on on many days and weekends, you have huge groups of people con congregating, mixing, and all of that on the sea So I just want to put that out there, and I want to say that we are 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 very um, cognizant and very concerned and very. Um, we believe in standards and we believe that you need to put safety force. But if you don't do it holistically, then you, you, you're losing the whole point. And that, and that is why we've been saying too, that tourism is basically singled out um, for, for, for a, hard, a hard approach in our view. If you were to look at the official gossip, for example, uh, it covers what you need to do as operating a business it talks about screening of workers, screening of guests, um, the uh, organization of work, training of, of staff, uh, you know, dealing with the, the education of people in terms of, of, of the COVID, uh, talking about about persons getting um, what you call it psychiatric treatment and so on. So all of that is covered there. What I'm saying is the tourism sector should be allowed to operate under the same guideline. So I just want to share that. What I'm saying is, what, what if you have an official gazette, it should cover every single industry and every single business. And it, in, it should include the seawalls and, and the, and the trampolines. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, yes, Metro. I, I, I hear you and I personally share your, 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 your views on certain aspects. Um, we're going to take this, in the interest of time, we're going to take this as the final question. It has to do with um, hotels, you know, by, if hotels violate their, their what they're supposed to do, uh, will, they, will the reg regulations be adjusted to address and to, you know, um, enforcement? Yeah, well, 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 thanks for that question, the last question there, um, Lloyd. I think, um, again, the structure of the, the, the new regulations will cater for this. You know, it's a classic carrot and stick metaphor, really, we're looking at, because you don't want to have pure rewards, or you don't want to have a system of pure punitive measures, right, or punishment. So you need to have a mix of both to ensure that the, that the I guess, the structure or the, the instrument or mechanism works. So yes, you give them the carrot in terms of you, you, you do outline the, the benefits. Yes, it's mandatory. We understand the, the GTA regulations, right? Um, but you, you need to give them support, whether it's training support, marketing support, business service support. But at the end of the day, you also need to have, um, you know, a mechanism in place where you can ensure that people um, are going to be compliant, right? So, you know, punitive measures must be in place to, to ensure the smooth flow. So it has to be a mix of both. And 
I can I can you know confidently say that the new or the revised um, tourism regulations framework has accommodated that. Yes. Um, yeah. Can I say one thing here, uh, Lloyd? Yes. Um, yes I, want to, I want to commend. I want to commend the task force on on what they have done in terms of the police, for example. What they did is the police uh, uh, would go out and if they see people, um, you know, going out without masks, what they do is they, 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 they give them a mask and say, you know, you should wear this. Um, and, and if you have congregation of people, they say, you ask them to, you know, make sure that you distance and that you wear the mask. So I believe what in, in enforcement, as Cameron says, in enforcement, you can, you can incentivize compliance and so this example is what needs to be done but it needs to be done in a holistic way yes we can we can spend all day talking about tourism tourism in guyana but certainly we have to bring this program to a close uh just to remind you it's the focus today was uh standards in tourism and we wanted to highlight uh the the standards that are relevant to tourism and of course their benefit to the sector we had we have with us or we had with us uh, Mitra uh, Ram Kumar is the president of the Tourism Hospitality Association of Guyana, and Kamrul Bash was the product development manager at the Tourism Authority. Yeah, I want to thank you, viewers, for being a part of this program, for sharing your questions. Um, the questions were very relevant, and we, of course, we had the opportunity to address um, them. For those that we did not address, I apologize. Uh, I apologize, I apologize for that, uh, but certainly uh, you can contact the GNBS via our social or the Ghana Tourism Authority or a tag. We have our, we have our uh, Facebook page, we have our website and all of that. You can post your questions on these uh, platforms and we can address them privately. So on behalf of the Ghana National Bureau of Standards, uh, I, I would like to say thank you viewers Thank you very much, presenter Mitra and Kamru, presenters Mitra and Kamru, for taking the time to share this information as we celebrate uh, Tourism Awareness Month 2020. Uh, I do hope you have a blessed day. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.